And here we are. Hello, everybody. I'm Cassidy. I'm your moderator. And we're here with Waves Open Sessions. And today we have a very, very special man who has produced people like Dr. Dre, Kendrick Lamar, Busta Rhymes, Rick Ross, Eminem, and the list goes on and on. His name is Focus. And here he is. What's What's happening? Nice to see you, man. Nice to see you, too. Thank you very much for having myself and the Waves family in here to the studio to show us what you do, man. I'm honored. I really appreciate that. No problem. So, everybody, sit back and enjoy. Here we go. Hey guys, welcome back. Again, we're here with my man Focus, and we're going to be learning hip-hop tips and tricks and secrets that you won't learn anywhere else. This man has a very identifiable sound. If you don't know already, you're going to know by the end of this, and it's very special how he gets to these things. It's not just put in a plug-in. There's a little bit to it, so you're just going to have to watch very carefully and take notes if that's what you do. So I just need to go over a couple of things before we kick this off, and uh, the first thing has to do with headphones. So I'm just going to read off the page here. We encourage you to listen to this webinar with headphones or suitable monitors, not from laptop speakers. That way you can have the best possible listening experience. The thing is, we're going to be working through all frequency ranges, right? And if you don't have something that can hear or or um, display all those ranges, then you're going to be missing out on something. So please take care of that, right? The next thing is we have a question and answer session that happens with Focus, right? And there's already questions coming in. Keep feeding them to us uh, through the Q&A, through the chat. You won't see your question because we have so many of them, but please understand they will then show up at my computer here and I will read them to Focus and he's going to answer them. So that's going to come up. Uh, The other thing great about this Waves Open session, besides being here with talented people like Focus, is the giveaways, right? So the giveaway um, uh, for this show is going to be a DigiGrid D sound grid. Um, And you can see it right there on your screen. Uh, And the way this is going to work, the way you're going to win it, is we are going to get these questions in. and we'll ask some to, to, to uh, focus here, but we have our own question that we're going to ask you guys, and then you're going to answer through the chat. And the first person to answer that will win this awesome in-out device, okay? So we'll be getting to that. Um, the last thing I have to say before focus takes over is that um, there's a special bonus Uh, Courtesy of Waves to everyone who watches this live event, at the bottom of this live webcast page on Waves.com, you can see a special 25% discount code. You can use it to get any Waves plugin or bundle in the next 24 hours. The discount code is only available for the people who are watching the live version of this. So if you're watching the uh, pre-recorded, then that code will not work. So it's only the people watching the live one, all right? So um, get that code, and then you have 24 hours to use it. So go ahead and get that done. All right, that's about it for the formalities. Now on to the good stuff. So I'm going to give it over to Focus here, and what we're going to start with is he's just going to tell us a little (coughs) bit about himself how he got here and kind of bring some of us who don't know him up to speed. So, focus. Okay. Yeah. Tell us. Uh, born uh, in New York. Um, my father is Bernard Edwards from Chic. Uh, so, my mother and father, my mother used to sing as well. So, they met in the club and uh, they got uh, married and had me. And I've only been around music, you know. Um, I'm the oldest of six kids and we all are musically inclined you know so it is one of those things that uh it's been a, a i guess you can call it a calling mm-hmm. you know yeah. it's, it's all i've ever known so uh definitely i got it all from pop you know and did you think it was something that you were going f- like did you know you were going into the music land or you just kind of were fed there it's funny my dad didn't want me to do it okay. you know he never he didn't want me to do music but um you know when you tell a kid not to touch your oven? Mm-hmm. 
Yeah, you've touched, touched the, the oven. oven. Yeah. So uh, I touched the oven. Yeah. I got in the oven. Yeah. I turned the oven on. And yeah. Stayed in there. You yeah. know. Said so, I like this hot. <laughs> yeah, I like. It. <laughs> but um, that's pretty much it. Like I really just wanted to. I wanted him to be proud of me. That yeah. was that was my whole goal. I just wanted my dad to be proud of me. Yeah. You know. I would, I'd probably say. Yeah. And that's that's the case. <laughs> so guys, what we're gonna do is this is really cool because I wasn't expecting this and Focus wasn't expecting this, but he's gonna create something on the spot. So as if uh, we were just showing up in the studio and we're working together and Focus is going to do what he does. So watch and watch very closely to every little thing he does because he, he doesn't do anything just for fun. It's, it's a thought out process. Now, some of that has taken a while to get there, but mm. some of it is very natural. So keep on point with him. All right, Focus. All right, for sure. So um, normally when I get into uh, the creative space, um, I just want to find something that I like, and mind you, I only have five minutes, so you guys, uh, I have a couple of things up that um, I like, you know, um, I didn't start anything, but I have a couple of things up I like, so I'll go through um, just how I would normally, you know, go through something, so, yep. um, of course, I'm going to pull up something crazy, Codex. What is yeah, that thing? Codex, Codex from <laughs> Waves, and... Um, it's super dope. It's super dope arpeggiated uh, since, and, and that seems to be the wave, you know. Everybody okay. talks about the wave, but okay. um, the sounds in here are crazy. So I'm just going to, you know, I'm just going to do something. And guys, mind you, this is five-minute beat. Uh, whoever tries to judge me on a five-minute <laughs> beat, um, you know, it's not my fault. All right. And he didn't know this was coming, so hey. here we go. Yeah, I, that feels good. So what I would normally do is just this. Uh, I'm just going to create a texture. There's so many things I can do with just that right there. Really have some fun. Do it. Now this is a thing called kickstart. Okay. It's just something I want to use to give it a pulse. Now one of the okay. things I always do when I do uh, anytime I'm making anything with chords, I I always go to sound pitch shifter. Okay. Every time. Why? So, um, there is a proper place that a chord and a uh, and a chord progression lives okay. and it's a feeling okay. you know I, I honestly believe that um, when you really are going into a creative space you have to be in tune with your emotions but you have to be in tune with the heart mm -hmm. you know and mm -hmm. it's, it's a feeling so mm -hmm. let me do this here so sometimes the key that you started in might not be the right one yeah and and, and the funny thing about it is it is there's no such thing as a wrong one it's right. just one that makes me feel good right you know okay I'm gonna let that live there. All right, this is the thing that everybody asks me about every time I do anything. It's about my drums, so I'm gonna use uh, one of my friends in the industry, Ill Mine. Uh, his drums are ridiculous, so yeah. I'm just gonna use uh, something from his stuff. Cool. Yeah, we'll make it a, uh, yeah, let's see. We'll make it real, I don't know, maybe hip hop. We're not doing country today? Well, uh, you know, I don't think they're ready for me in the, in the country <laughs> world yet. <laughs> so when I do uh, a drum track, I like to do it all together, and okay. then I'll separate. Right. So like a drummer would. Exactly. Okay. Because it, you know, I don't know a drummer that sits there and plays the hi hat first, and right. then does the snare. That's a little awkward. It. Uh, yeah. it might not work. <laughs> <laughs> so let's see what let's see what comes out. Cool. Let's see. All right, 
it. So I'm gonna go with that for a right copy now. paste. Yes. Boom. <laughs> All right, so automatically I'm going to duplicate these tracks. And what I do is drag. So it's all the same thing. Okay. And now what I'm doing here is just... Ah. Gotcha. Yeah, <laughs> you know exactly what this gotcha. is. So that's my kick. I'll turn around and get rid of that. Second track will be my snare. Got it. Top one will be my hi hat. Yeah. So now from here, I'll go into sure. quantizing. I like my snare to be a little bit earlier. Okay. Um, right now I'm swinging it just to give it a little human feel. Okay. I'll bring my shift a little bit earlier for this. Nice. My kick. I bring that a little bit later. Still a human feel. Mm -hmm. Hi hat, same thing. Give it a human feel. It's a swing. Mm -hmm. And I'll push that later than a kick. Okay. So right now I like I like what's going on. I think it could be a little bit faster. It's funny because before you did that, I was moving left to right, like just a sway, <laughs> uh -huh. but now I'm bobbing my head yeah, opposed you to swaying. So you, you want to find a sweet spot with, with the, the pitch and you want to find a sweet spot for the tempo. Yeah. You know? Yeah. So um, let's work on the snare for a minute. Cool. So uh, I like to EQ my snare first, and I'm just using what's on Logic at the moment. Um, but everyone that knows me knows that I go right to Arvox, mm -hmm. and uh, it's funny. This is this is not really a have to, but this is my go to. It just pops it. The gate is so forgiving. I say it all the time, so it just gives me a really good feeling. Mm -hmm. um, there's my snare. Hi hat. You really don't have to do anything to make it sizzle. You know, I take low end out if it if it's a sample hi hat. Um, so real quick, that was the EQ for the hi hat for right? the hi hat. So yes. you dropped out all the stuff that really isn't there anyway, you, right? It, it's not going to register. It's right. Not gonna, it's just going to be noise. Uh, right now we're here with the kick. Again, I'll go to Arvox. Okay. But let me let me EQ first. Get a little bit more pop out of it. And when you're going like it seemed like you were going just below 200, is that a general spot where you can kind of start and then move it or not really? I, I like, I, I start, um, normally when I start over here, uh, at 200, I'm going for punch. Okay. So I'll start to push up punch first to see how much I can get. Okay. And then I'll give it, I'll round it out okay. uh, below okay. 200. Um, and another uh, cool thing that you can do with a kick, everybody uh, knows this, I'm sure, because um, Waves doesn't have any ignorant followers but <laughs> uh our base is a really cool thing that you can put on um kick as well okay. just to uh to boost the frequency and and play with the frequency maybe you want to soften your kick so now i have mm -hmm. a rounder kick yeah you do you see yeah, you put um, the carpet over it exactly yeah. or maybe you want to turn around it and get a top Okay. A little bit more pop, you yep. know, so yep. it, it depends on what you're looking for in those sounds, but it's really cool uh, to dial in with something like that. So for me, I like the kick as it is. I'm going to go for the Arvox. Okay. Just bring it up a little bit yep. and get a nice clean stop. Mm -hmm. All right. So let's see. So this. Sorry to interrupt. Go ahead. But you have these two things, and they're working. Yeah. So where did your brain go? Like where? You, you... know what? Right now, I, that's that's the funny thing. I don't know where it is. Like okay. I, I really, really like to just kind of dive into. If I can, I like to dive into the creative pool. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So I try. I try not to let the walls close in on me or the ceiling come down on me. Mm -hmm. So right now, 
um, just for the sake of time, I'm going to play around with a piano. Grand Rhapsody from Waves is really, really cool. You can really hear the pieces of a piano where, um, you know, most plugins will just give you the piano sound, but you're actually getting the innards, the guts of the piano. So, you know, it sounds really, really good. Um, so we're going to see. Let's see what we can do. Come up with it. Cool. Let's just say if I if I wanted that to be my idea, sure. so uh, I'm gonna do that. I'm gonna put this over here. Oops, it's live, folks. This okay. is really live. I'm not right. Live. <laughs> so nice. I'm gonna yeah. give myself yeah, a, exactly. a yeah, you know. So uh, we'll make it even. Let's see. So let's try that. Logic doesn't like to cycle like that. <laughs> <laughs> but for something like this, okay. Um, I'm going to EQ it. And what are you hearing in, in, in what you want to fix? Like, what is it about the piano that you wanted to EQ? Well, the, the funny thing about a piano is there's so many um, levels to a piano. Mm -hmm. There's so many levels to all instruments, but it, it depends on what you're trying to get out of it. The top end of a piano, the tiny part, the, mm -hmm. the, the metal part of it mm -hmm. is what I like. Got I it. like that aggressive feel. Okay. I like that, you know, I love when the, the hammer hits the, uh, the string. You Got know? it. So I'm, I'm going for that. I'm going for a little bit more of the top edge okay. of the piano. So, Perfect. You know? So for something like this, maybe I'll try something different. Doubler is always dope. It widens everything out, and it also puts it in. So with that that you pulled up just now, you, did you kill the center? I killed the center just for the purpose of giving it a different texture. Okay. You know, um, it's not a, a go-to method. I'm okay. sure that everybody would like to uh, still be able to feel the music because if you if you don't have uh good headphones yeah. you know you kill the center it could really mess up the actual experience of the song got it but okay. it's just it's a different texture that's all yeah. okay. so and then on top of that i'm now feeling like this it's a little bit more morbid so i'm gonna uh, go up three uh and just to see what it feels like oh i did this wrong please forgive me let's see So it feels good to me. Mm -hmm. That's a good nod thing. I would turn around and probably play live bass on it. Nice. You know what I'm saying? Just yeah. because it has a good feel. You know, but I would I would give it movement with the bass. I yeah. would give it movement with guitar. I would give it movement with organic stuff because the piano feels so organic. Got it. You know? So when you need movement, this you could translate that to live instrument or not necessarily? I That's that's a personal that's, preference. Got it. You know, there's yeah. a lot of kids that, um, and, and a lot of these new producers, they're super dope. And, they're, and they're, their texture, the way that they use timing and texture with just hi-hats. 
mm. I think is intriguing. Mm. You know, um, it's not something that I came from, even though, you know, that 16th, that rattle hat. Yeah, yeah. Um, Jimmy Jam and Terry Lewis used it on 779311, you know, yeah. um, and they used it with Sherelle. They used it. So these are people that I've already heard that rattle hat, but mm -hmm. to hear them go from the rattle hat going into the triplet mm -hmm. or, you know, yeah, and yeah. just just playing with timing like that, I think it's it's truly a uh, genius yeah you know so um there's ways that you can do it it doesn't have to be live yeah um i used to be uh an advocate for live okay. you know you need to know how to play an instrument this right. and blah blah blah. but sure. then um you know a lot of these kids are very talented without that you know yeah. so i'm not i'm not putting walls or ceiling or floors around them they're, they're allowed to float in creativity like i am and um, which slightly important when yeah. you're trying to create if you're great trying stuff. to create yeah, yeah. exactly <laughs> right so well, I think that's awesome that you did that. Guys, we took a little longer than five minutes, but I mean, in the comments, please let Focus know. He literally did just create this. I know he does it all day long, but mm -hmm. still, we put him on the spot in front of thousands of people, right? And he created this. So I want to thank him. Thank you, Focus, for no doing problem, that. No problem. And now, now we're going to go into um, another session that he has already right so he's going to open that up and as he's opening that up i'm going to get to a question real quick so let's see what we got here in the chat josh asks do you like blending two or three different tonal colors of snares when you create a drum track oh, that's a good question um the funny thing about it is i do not like to layer drums okay. i don't like to okay but sometimes a track will call for it and why don't you like to? I don't like to just because I, I feel like if I want to get the sound, there's a direct way to do it. Okay. And if there's, you know, they say the, the easiest uh, way to get to point B is a straight line. Right. You That's know, right. so yeah. if I'm stepping from A to B, yeah. I want to go that straight line. I don't want to do the roundabout way Got it. to get to B. Got it. And, and, um, that's just something that's always been a way that I've, I've, uh, dealt with my career. So if I don't have it, I'll make it. And um and I'll make sure that it, it has the same impact as three or four or five snares. But it's just a personal preference. Got it. You know? That's awesome. I love it. So let, let me do one more. Sure. Um, some identifying, uh, let's see, let me reread that. Uh, how do you, okay, we kind of, there's a question about how do you get your uh, kick and snare to knock, but we kind of. Talk to us, uh, Arvox, right? Is one Ar of the things. Arvox is going to give it its top snap. It's okay. going to get rid of all the, the noise at the end. It's a okay. forgiving gate. And I, I say it all the time, but I don't think that people understand how important that is. Like, because for me, yep. I used to sample drums from vinyl. Got it. So you're getting dirt. You're yeah. getting dirt from the needle to the vinyl. Yep. And then, you know what I'm saying? Yep. So it's, uh, it's really one of those amazing gates that uh, you don't get the click. Uh -huh. uh, you know, so it doesn't cut off the the natural part, the the organic part of the uh -huh. the um, the wave. So, it it really is uh, important. But when it comes down to knocking, you have to turn dials. You have to learn EQ. You mm -hmm. have to understand the bands of EQ mm -hmm. because that's where the natural part of the knock is going to come from. Mm -hmm. And then everything else is is like uh, makeup on a woman. Sure. A woman is beautiful yep. inside and out, but yep. then. It's just something that Enhances. she puts on to yep. enhance, exactly. Yep. So, And so, guys, I want to say, guys and gals, Focus talks a lot about feeling and vibe, right? But that always translates to something technical. So yep. we might not say that, but like he just said, he took time to understand frequencies. You don't just magically understand frequencies. That's not how it works. He took the time to study that. Once he understood that, then you can forget it and go about your business, right? right? Yeah, yeah. And I think that uh, a lot of people negate feeling, and it's it's just like in school. There's book smart and there's street smart. That's right. Um, but the the way you live life is the melding of the two. There's not one book smart person that is going to outlive a street smart person, and vice versa. You have to meld the two, and this is the same thing with the creative world. Yep. Yeah. So let's show us one, let's show them one of your tracks. So this one is called the uh, the contribution. It's a record okay. that I put out. Um, I forgot what year it was, but I was super bored. Mm -hmm. And <laughs> when I get bored and, you know, idle hands, you start uh, just creating things. Mm -hmm. So it's a three-parter in one song. Um, and this is the third part. This is the more creative part. So this is why I use this one. Okay. So I'm going to let it play for a little bit. Okay.
So this this it Dude. comes up to a verse. It's so. awesome. <laughs> Thank you so much. That's awesome. Um so this was this was literally my emotion. Like if you listen to it as it grows, I played live bass on it. I mm. I literally just I'm I'm a fiend for chords. Sure. So I really wanted to make it an experience. So sure. that's why it's a three parter. Each part shows a line of aggression. Mm -hmm. um, the contribution was a contribution to young listeners because I didn't want them to think that I was bashing them. Okay. But it's at the end of the day, there has to be some substance. So mm -hmm. not just giving them substance on the top end, mm -hmm. I wanted to give them substance on the bottom end. Mm -hmm. So there's nothing wrong with musicality. No. There's nothing wrong with it. And, and for them to accept R&B from Drake, Yep. You know, yeah. you got to accept it from everybody else. You yep. can't just be one sided. So um, let's go into to some of the fun stuff in here. Um, again, like I told you, if you look through this session and I can just keep clicking through, you'll find uh, sound shift on there because I wanted it to be the right pitch. Um, I'll show you the piano here. Um, when I originally did it, it was a step down. Okay. I'll play it. Now, for me, just the, the way the piano sounds by itself, it sounds morbid. <laughs> it okay. sounds, you know, it sounds, it, it, it is heavy, yeah. but at the same time, the mood of it wasn't supposed to be heavy. It's supposed it. to go, this is the climax of the song. Right. You know, so yeah. I had to bring it in, into a, a place where it felt climactic. Um, it felt victorious at the same time. Okay. So uh, when I did it, I turned around and I started pitching up and I found it at plus one semitone, which is weird. Because it's not that big a move. No. But I'll play it. And you can almost feel the life in it. It brightens. Yeah. But it, a half semitone. Like, that, I mean, a semitone. That's, a semitone, it's, yeah. It's, it's it, one semitone. It's, it's not even that, that big a deal, but it is when you just, when you're going for a feeling, you know? Uh, let's see, the drums. Uh, and, and this was a drum fill that I kept playing and I was throwing it through Looperator. Okay. Looperator is one of my favorite things to, to use because it can take any any kind of audio wave uh -huh. and just manipulate it. However you, you know, need. however you want it. Nice. Glitching, whatever you want. Nice. So all I did was just displace this drum fill that I was playing over and over again. Uh, so I'll play that real quick. And is that is this from a live drummer or you? Well, it's, it's actually from it's actually from a drum kit that I have. Okay. So it's it's um. You know how they have uh, single drums and then they'll have fills yes. and things like got that. Yes, got it, so got it. It's just one of those. Okay. So uh, just starting from the top, I'm just going to play it. So I'm literally just playing this drum loop. So I wanted it to feel a little bit more beefy. You know, you got to go to Torque. Torque is one of those plugins that for anybody that has drum loops, anybody that's using drums, anybody that's using uh, just even like the, the out of the box stuff, you know, like the stuff that just sounds so rudimentary, you're, you're able to dial in to places in this drum to give it life. Got it. It doesn't matter how bad the, the snare sounds. It doesn't matter how bad the kick sounds. Yeah. You can give it life with torque. Nice. So okay. in this, it's just I wanted it to feel a little bit more meaty. It's cool. I like it. Yeah. But I want to love it. So this is without torque. This is with torque. Oh, when those toms hit. You see? Oh, yeah. So you feel, you can, and you can even feel it in the kick. Yeah. So it's giving a little bit of meat to the snare hit. It's mm -hmm. giving a little bit of meat, well, a lot of meat to the uh, the um, tom. Mm -hmm. And when I say meat, guys, I'm, I'm talking about actual, just, um, how would I put that uncreatively? <laughs> uh, substance. I guess, I guess when you turn around and you hit a tom, yeah. there's a body. Yeah. There's, there's a, you know, there's uh -huh. a roundness to uh -huh. it. And when you're properly miking drums, you're going to get that every hit. That's right. You know, so this yeah. is, this is me loosely miking my drums the way I want them. Got it. And torque gives me that. Got you it. You know, so. Okay. Um, that's definitely a tool that I use all the time. Uh, so maybe something that people want to use their little discount to buy, torque, would I, be 
Top I, three, maybe. I I dare you. <laughs> <laughs> where where are you? Where are you? <laughs> there you no, guys go. Yeah, the R bundle is is ingenious. It's ingenious. I um, love it, especially going for the bass. Uh, I, now this one is going to be funny. I played live bass, um, and I played different pieces, mm -hmm. and I pieced it together because I wanted it to feel like I'm a dope bass player when I'm not. Got it. Uh, yeah. Did everybody hear that? Yeah. Did you see he I'm just not, admitted on, that he's that he had I'm to just, piece it together? I'm just not. I'm not. If, if you want to put me on stage, there's a bad. It's going to be bad. So. <laughs> That's why he's in the studio, y'all. Yeah. <laughs> he's, he's not a dummy. Hey, but. um. So I use vocal writer. And okay. I really. I smushed the. Uh, I got to stop saying smushed. But I. I, <laughs> I really uh, brought the, the range in very tight. Okay. <clears throat> and for me, I just, I really wanted to get every nuance of what I was doing on the bass. Even if it was a mistake, it's a texture. Okay. You know what I'm saying? Okay. So it's a way that you can hit it. Uh, this is without vocal writer. Okay. This is with vocal writer. So if you just look at the fader, it's it's just like old school back in the day we used to automate, automate that's right. you know yeah. so it's, it's a wonderful feature that now is giving these kids a way to automate without having to know how to do it in the ssl yeah without having to engage the motors right you know yeah. so it's still uh the integrity is there the importance is there um but you understand the purpose because you used to sit there and automate right i, I still do right i still do right. like we're we're currently in, in a mixing phase now, and one of the greatest things about being at Aftermath, one of the greatest things about working with Dre has been the fact that we keep it old school when we push our music through the board. Mm -hmm. We're not mixing in the box, and mm -hmm. it's not ev not everybody has that. It's not at everyone's leisure. Yeah. You know, um, I'm not going to tell uh, people that their mixes in the box sound like garbage. It's, yeah. it's, uh, it's wrong. Yeah. You know, it's a different day and age, but... I have the honor and privilege and blessing to mix through an SSL, yeah. and I know how to do that. Yeah. I've watched my father do it, yep. you know, all the way up to watching my mentor do it. So, you know, I'm still learning. Yeah. I'm still learning, and, and Dre is still teaching me how to dial into certain frequencies, mm -hmm. you know, and not be afraid of pushing it yeah. to the red and pushing it to the uh, to the limit. So, you know, it, it's, it's one of those things that I, I hold near and dear to me because I know that at the end of the day, my mix will sound different than anybody else's mix because of, you know, the tutelage. Got it. You know? Yeah. So let's go dive back into the track because some of us don't know it as well as you. So is there any other, um, so we did the drums, right? And we did the bass. Mm -hmm. um, no vocals on this one, right? Well, there is a vocal, okay. but it's mine and I, I... That's up to you, my friend. Hey, you know what? I'll, sh I'll share a little bit. Here we go. Everybody, here we go. All right. Y'all ain't gotta listen, but you said, feel this all in your soul. I've been feeling this since I was six years old. I came from a generation where I paid my dues. I'm driven, but for some reason I'm still paying these tolls. Kid like there ain't no easy passes. If God didn't call me, I'd be intrigued with passing. But now I live with a purpose and I lead with passion. Not just words, I'm living it. Just read my actions. Need I say I'm free? Like I said, it's just gonna be a little bit, but yeah. It's one of those I, I was listening to the story, <laughs> man. That's a story. I, yeah, uh, that's the whole song. The whole song is a story. And I started from a, a humble place of getting chastised from people that are, you know, telling me you keep complaining about where music is. Mm. Make the change. Got it. You know, so that's where I started from. And then in the middle, I got mad. Yep. So I said a verse from that. And then okay. this one was like, I'm not mad. It's just it's time for change. Like, what are we doing? Sure. So you try to group the people around you sure. that are like-minded. Yeah. So it was, you know, the three levels yeah. or the three stages of being upset about yeah. something. Sure. So that's what the contribution was. I gave them my emotion as a contribution. So for, for this, like I said, I'm always going to go to vocal writer. Okay. I keep it super tight. Okay. Um, only because I'm using vocal writer for the exact reason it's been invented, for the automation. Got I it. want... I want regularity in my vocal. Okay. I want regularity in my volume. I don't want to have to turn around and, and automate it. So I'll keep it super tight, and I get a natural response out of that. Um, 
and that's that's pretty much it like the rest of the stuff is very very simple very easy um if you look there's not a lot of um plugins on each instrument yeah i keep it very simple uh i believe that most of the the stuff that you do on, in your imprint is going to be eq based got it you know that's when you start finding your sound that's when sure. you start finding the sound of the sound and finding your sound personally got it you know yeah so in any car there's a certain way somebody listens to their music. Mm -hmm. They might like more treble, right. less bass, more right. mid. Sure. So you start dialing in on a car. Yeah. Uh, SSL is like a car on steroids, you Got know, it. because yeah. we have every band allowed to us. Right. Uh, you know, so yeah. it just, that's, I believe that that's where my fingerprint starts. Got it. You know? And that's a hard one to reproduce a little bit. Yeah. Because you don't, unless you have the SSL plugins or something like that, it's... I just think no, just EQ period. I think EQ there's there's so many ways to hear just one instrument. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. you might like uh your bass muddy. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. back when I lived in New York, that's all we wanted was our drums to knock and 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 and, and they hit the woofer and this mm -hmm. and that. When I moved out to the West Coast and I met Dre, it's Dre doesn't just want the woofers to move, he wants the tweeters to move. Got it. And I'm like that the tweeters move. I'm like how you know. <laughs> so it's it's one of those things that you start to learn things and and you have to be open okay. to to that uh, different characteristic, a different culture, different whatever you want to call it mm -hmm. is different. And people listen to music different. That's mm -hmm. why it's a universal language. Yep. No one gets the same feeling from one song. It's, you know, totally it's a agree. beautiful thing. Yeah. Totally agree. All right. I I think we're gonna go uh, to another question real quick cool. here because we got them flying in. Cool. cool, cool. Um, D R O asks, "How do you like to pan things? Can you give your top panning advice for drums or vocals?" Sure. Um, uh, in my whole career, I've learned that everything in a track has its own space. Uh, back in the day, if you listen to a lot of drums. Um, from the 60s, maybe even the 50s, you'll notice that the drums were always panned all the way to one side. So you were able to pan to the left mm -hmm. and just get music and vocals, mm -hmm. and then the drums and the bass and everything was living on the right side. But for them, that was that was polyphonic. That was that was stereo, right. you know, yeah. instead of them truly dialing into it. So now we have the ability to, to understand that a kick coming down the center is not going to hurt anything. Right. A snare coming off a little bit to the left, I'll go maybe two clicks to the left just to give it its own okay. space. A hi-hat going a couple of clicks to the right is going to give it its own space. Mm -hmm. And you'll notice that now you have so much room in the middle to play with. Mm. Now you can make sure that your vocals are resting in the right place. You can make sure that that synth, play, uh, that synth that's playing could be playing um, a little bit louder or right. it could recess and, and fit right. So um, there are perfect places to put things or if you have three different hats i know that i'll i'll turn around and do a couple of clicks to the right on the hat and if i have like a rattle hat i'll go all the way to the left got it maybe about uh nine o'clock mm -hmm. you know and then if i want to have an offset hat i'll go all the way to the right mm -hmm. and i'll go three o'clock mm -hmm. just to give it give you an experience in your headphones mm -hmm. you know again learning under the tutelage of dre like not if you put on the headphones of any of his records you're always going to find something new dancing around yeah yeah, yeah. So it's, yeah. you know, that's it. Excellent. All right, let's get one more. Let's see. Uh, now this one's going to be a tough one, but I'll throw it at you anyway. <laughs> What's the best thing? I mean, there's there's quite a few, but what would you say is you know your top thing you learned from Dre? Like, what do you think is the? Is it a technical thing or is it more of a life focus? You know, like how. I think that the biggest thing I learned from Dre is to never accept what I can do as the final say-so. Mm. There's always more. Mm -hmm. There's always bigger. There's always better. There's always reaching out to an uncomfortable place and finding comfortability in that. Mm -hmm. And not expecting perfection, but being a perfectionist. Yeah. You know, and those were the things. At my entire my entire stint here at aftermath has been that like stop being okay sitting in the chair just making beats yeah. what else yeah you know and, yeah. and you push yourself he doesn't have to push you for you to push yourself because you see him doing so much more right and at his age at his 
age in the game at his age and behind the boards and behind beats and behind movies and behind everything he's done he does it with the same passion yep. you would think he's still 20 yeah. you know and he still comes into the studio and he's the first here and the last to leave yeah. you know so I think that that's that, that's the biggest thing that I've gotten from being an aftermath and and I like being pushed I like being uncomfortable for the sake of comfortability sure. you know and he just wants you where he's at right yeah I it, think he just wants me to understand that you know, there's a way that you can get where I am, mm -hmm. but you have to find your own way. Mm -hmm. And he's not going to turn around and grab you by the hand. Mm -hmm. He's not. Mm -hmm. But he will open up the door and show you like, okay, this is the door that would have taken you a long time to get to. Right. Now go through the door and do your thing. Right. You know, so yeah. he's given me a lot of, a lot of teaching without knowing that he's teaching a lot of direction. And then at the same time, he's given me a lot of opportunity. So. But I bet... Any like about anything, you were like, you got it. Uh-huh. Sounds good. You were always ready for that information that he wanted to give you. Yes. Opposed to thinking you knew more than the man. I would never do that. Yeah. And I would never do that. Even, um, you know, growing up, my mother taught us to teach the janitor, uh, treat the janitor like you treat the CEO. Right. So um, you never know when the janitor is going to become the CEO. That's right. But it's not the reason that you treat it. It's a person That's behind right. that title. Yeah. So at the same time, um, I'm always learning. Yeah. I learn from my wife. I learn from my kids. Yeah. You know, my kids are, are dumb Amazing. younger than me, you know. <laughs> but I learned that uh, not every situation needs to be sweated. I don't need right. to be uh, so overwhelmed with life that I'm not living life, you know. Yeah. So I learn from everyone. So I'm going to tell a quick story really quick to the audience. Sure. When I was uh, at lunch with Focus and our friend from Waves, uh, a friend said, hey, Focus, we need to start early for this session so we're ready and, and we're going to start at 6. Is that okay with you? And Focus was like, you got it. I'll be there. Like there wasn't a hesitation. And the reason I say that is because look at where he is in his career. <laughs> and somebody told him to be somewhere at 6 o'clock in the morning even though he'd be mixing very late. And he said, you got it. And I have to say in my experience in my life, that's what makes it. That's the other part to this equation. One of it is his musical talents but the other part is the ability to get along with other talented people so nicely Appreciate done that. man thank you so much so let's get uh i think we probably let me see if there's another one no let's uh i think we'll do the trivia question okay let's let's throw in the trivia question and we'll give people time to answer it hopefully they'll be pretty quick and then as we're waiting for the answer we'll get to the next track sure cool yeah. All right, people, here we go. So I'm going to read off the script so I don't mess this thing up here. Um, okay. Okay, so at the start of the show, we said we were going to ask you a trivia question, and the first one who sends the right answer via the chat will win. So don't yell at your screen. It's not going to do anything. <laughs> you gotta, you got to type it in, okay? So um, don't forget what you're winning, and if you have forgotten, let me remind you. What you're winning here is a DigiGrid D Sound Grid audio interface. So it's an in-out device, so you can get um, your sound into your DAW, okay? And does some other cool things as well. So now this little beast, like I said, is a perfect I.O. for a bedroom producer, um, somebody who's just starting out, but it also can be good for somebody who works in a studio like this but then wants to go mix at the beach. You can take that with you. So it's, it's really for everybody. Um, also, if you connect the right components to it, it will enable you to record and process in real time with plugins. And this is what today's trivia question is about. So here we go. The director is going to put the question on the screen, and I'm going to read it. And here we go. Name two components you need to add to DigiGrid D in order to benefit from real-time processing and low latency monitoring with plugins. Go. Send your answer via the chat, and in a little bit, I'll come back and see who's won. But in the meantime, let's get back to business with my man Focus, and we're on to our next track. All right, cool. This one is um, from a beat CD that I put out called For Some Reason. Um, and it's the last track on, on the uh, CD. And it literally is just, it's more of the aftermath sound that I'm known for. 
piano driven, uh, heavy drums. So I'll play it real quick and then we'll go through it. So again, like I said, it's a beat CD. Um, not too dynamic on the beat. Uh, it literally is something uh, that I'm known for. Uh, it's a sparse beat. Uh, there's enough space for any vocalist to live, whether you're singing or, or rapping. Um, but some of the things that I like um, doing in this beat, uh, the snare, for instance, I can go right there to the snare and show you. Now, uh, I mentioned torque earlier. This is the snare without torque. You can hear it's more mid-driven. Uh, there's some top end to it because there's a clap over it. Mm -hmm. So I wanted it to be a little bit more round. Mm -hmm. So I dialed down minus 210 in torque. The frequency here is amazing. Um, and I got to show this. I show this to everybody. Do it. I love this filter, man. They got it. They got to make it to where I can just automate it. But I, I just record it if I need to. But this filter is ridiculous. Is it on? Oh, it's not engaged. So That's awesome. a whole nother snare. Yeah. <laughs> so I love that. So but go. Oh, sorry to interrupt. But no. going back to that point earlier about the question, so this would be that moment where you're like, well, I'm not doing three snares. No. This is my snare, and I'm going to make it what it needs to I'm be. I'm going to make it work. And, Got it. and the thing about it is, before, you would detune, you would EQ, you would do this, but mm -hmm. now Torque is giving it to you right there. Love it. And it's, it's, it's really an easy tool. You're going to have to dial in. There is no magical uh, sense. There's no magical trim. There's no magical... There's nothing magical that I can give you to make you understand your drums. Got it. You have to dial in. Okay. And that's what I love about being creative. Like there's no, there should be no uh, gate in front of you, no okay. wall in front of you, you know? So for this, like I said, I wanted the snare to have a little bit more body. Okay. Engaging torque, this is how the snare sounds. You can hear the tone drop. Now, even if I wanted to, to be a little bit lower, yep. you drag. You're going to have to dial in. Yep. Dial in to find out what that snare is going to do. You start to hear the. You see, you start to, yeah, you start to hear mm -hmm. more tone. Yep. Now, I don't want it to have tone. Right. I'm not going to go for tone. Got not it. for this one. If I wanted it to be lower, it's one snare. <laughs> It's perfect. This is a perfect thing for any anybody that wants to do drums. And are you doing this as well as EQing? Yes. Okay. Yes. Okay. So even the trim. You want to turn around and, and experiment. Find a snare that works. That might not be the snare that works for this song, in my opinion, but... Now, there's a way that I can make that work, though. Of course you do. <laughs> <laughs> Here he goes, people. Watch him. <laughs> so the snare is powerful to me. So I'll boost some mid and just see if, it, if I can get it to explode. All right, yeah. There's a lot of tone in there. Yeah, now you're getting all that body yeah. of the snare. A lot of tone in yeah. there. So yeah, it's, it's, it's a dialing experience. You have to literally be okay with just sitting there for a little while and stop trying to make the immediate trap sound or the immediate yeah. 
trend sound or the wave or whatever and just dial in and find find a real happy place that you can exist and create from yeah, and it seems like from the short time i've talked to you that it's every track is a creative process for yes. you and i know that sounds silly but you know other people there there's like they're a little more cookie cutter they know they can yeah. do this they go yeah. to this they go to that eq that you know right. but it seems like you're different every track and you yeah. love that i do yeah. I, I that's the part that gets me excited is the creative aspect of even working with with you know, artists mm -hmm. um just learning uh new creative energies mm -hmm. um i've had the honor and blessing of working with some really great young talent here uh on the production side mm -hmm. um and their their energy is just ridiculous it's mm. through the roof mm. so just even trying to keep up is like you know an old man trying to run <laughs> five on five with, <laughs> with some high schoolers you know what i'm saying but at the same time um they teach me so much mm -hmm. you know and they're they're even open to listening you know and just being like you know what you've been in the game long enough let's just We'll glean from you, you glean from us, yeah. you know, and let's see how we can make this work. So yeah. um, it really is one of those great places. I don't have to worry about, I have to create this way. I got to make 808s and I got to learn how to bend my 808. And mm -hmm. this. I know people that do that. Mm -hmm. I can call anybody to do that because I have great rapport with the people. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, um, I know what I do mm -hmm. and I know how to be an expert at what I do, yeah. you know. Yes, you do. That's for sure. <laughs> uh, so there's a question that, that came in, cool. um, and I want to kind of expand on it. We chatted about it before we went live, which is uh, if you're doing a track like this and then you've got three major artists mm -hmm. on it, yeah. and, you know, typically the vocal is the most important thing. Mm -hmm. So what do, you have, what do you do when you have three most important things? Like, how do you balance that? And they're singing at the same time, like Alicia Keys in the background or something as somebody's rapping or, you know, whatever. How do you balance There's that? There's a way to balance it, but <clears throat> at the same time, they understand the position in a song. Mm -hmm. um, if somebody's singing background, Let's just say, um, I, and I'll give you a, a prime example. I did a song called Respect My Conglomerate for mm -hmm. Buster Rhymes. Buster Rhymes had Jeezy and Jadakiss on the first version, and then it was Lil Wayne and Jadakiss. Mm -hmm. Those are three important rappers. But at the same time, everyone got to showcase because they were all front rappers. They were just different ver uh, verses. Got it. So you make sure everybody sits right. Got it. But if everyone's singing at the same time, you're going to have to understand that, okay, if Alicia Keys is singing background for Beyonce, Beyonce still leads. Sure. Yep. So her space is there, yep. and then you give Alicia her space, and then whoever the third person is, you give them their space, and you allow them to exist and coexist. But you still have to play that position. Mm -hmm. And I think a lot of people negate that because they think it's a star. They need to be pushed up. No. It's right. not part. The, the, the most important part of a song is the composition, right. not the artist. Right. The artist is what helps us showcase the song. Right. But being truthful, if the song is whack, then the artist didn't yeah. do anything. Yeah. Nothing happens. Yeah. You know, so we have to make sure that the composition, for the sake of the composition, is great. Totally agree. All right, so let's get back to the track. Okay. Are there any, um, let's let's go to the bongos just for fun. Did you do okay. anything special to them, tuning them or Heck anything? yeah. Okay, it's there we go. Little, it's a little thing I like to call a smack attack. No. <laughs> Waves has this plugin <laughs> called Smack Attack. Smack Attack is a transient. It's really, really cool. Um, and again, it gives you the same exact pliability that Torque gives you. So okay. for something as small as this little, um, I'll just highlight this piece right here. As small as this little turnaround for the bongos, uh -huh. I just needed it to hit a little bit more and give it just a little bit top end. So this is without it. I like the texture of it. Yep. This is with it. Mm. So you hear a little bit more hand action. Yep. If I want more, you yep. just dial in more. It's like you got to go record it again almost. Like you got to move the mics and a little closer and... 100%. And then you awesome. get to turn around and, and really understand just texture. Mm. Texture. Like in, these things help you start to dial in on texture. Mm. And texture is important. You don't want your drums all sounding like... They're just regimented two, four beats or one, you know, mm -hmm. like texture is really important and it just gives it a very organic and human feel, mm -hmm. you know, so. What is one of your favorite texture tools then? Ooh. Or here, I got one for you. How about this? Sure. If I said, okay, this is amazing focus, mm. but I need the snare to sound silkier. 
called a torque. That's easy. Okay. Yeah, that's easy. But I think that's, it, did everybody see that? Because yeah. in my experience, that's what happens. People tell, you know, somebody like Focus, hey, I need this more aggressive. I need this bigger. Mm -hmm. I need this fatter. I need, and then you have to translate that into a yeah. plug-in or something, right? But the thing about it is that they don't care how you get there. They just right. want you to get there. Right. You know, so, um, and what I appreciate about these tools um, is that it's a quicker way to get there. Right. It doesn't mean that you can't get there any other way. Right. You know, um, there's millions of companies that are turning around and putting out millions of plugins, mm -hmm. you know, but um, Waves makes it to where it's easy. Like, you know, I can slap that on and I know how to get there and yeah. I know how to uh, to engage this plugin. It doesn't feel like brain, yeah. uh, brain cancer. Or, yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. Rocket science. Yeah. Like, I'm not, I'm not hurting. Uh, just trying to get a sound. So, yeah. And it seems like most of them that you use are maybe 10 buttons at the most. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And you're using five of them. Yeah. You know what I mean? But the thing about it is you have the pliability and the, and the, and the reach to do all 10. You just have to dial in and see what you're trying to do. That's right. And nobody, like, everybody plays it safe. Yeah. I want my snare to hit hard, and I want... There's nothing wrong with a, with a, a big beefy snare there's yeah. nothing wrong with it a lot of the motown records were made with those snares you, you know so you want ever yeah exactly <laughs> and those those records translate just as big now as they did back then agreed yeah. agreed so do you have anything else that you wanted to show um your fans people watching or say anything special because we're rounding out this awesome session so is there anything that you want to convey to your fans or you want to get across I honestly want them to understand the importance of creativity. Talent is a wonderful thing, but if you're not a creative talent, then you just have a talent and you're following a trend. Hmm. Understand what your heart is telling you. Understand what the emotions are. People think that emotions are soft, but they're not. Hmm. You know, they're not. That's where the best songs come from, hmm. from real life, yeah. from, from just tangible situations that you reach out to people like doing this right now yeah. what we're doing live yeah. you guys can ask me any question and and i want more questions i want more interaction because that makes me tangible that makes the situation tangible and you get the answer you need i can sit here and regurgitate information all yeah. day long yeah. but it might not be what you want yeah. so if you don't ask the question then you did yourself a disservice because i'm here Totally agree. So we better take another question then yep, after all that, shouldn't we? There it is. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, and, and I will announce the winner. We have the winner, so give me oh, just a second. Hey. <laughs> uh, let me see if I can get another question. Um, so I guess it's, uh, again, back to vocals. Um, this uh, Trist uh, says, your vocals have a very full sound. How do you get such a stereo sound but keep them sitting right in the mix? And I agree you when I was doing my research mm. and listening to all the tracks, it's like you have such little instrumentation but it's so full, but it's not stepping on each other's toes. Exactly. So how how are you getting uh, focusing on the vocal? How are you doing that? It's it's again and and I appreciate that Tris. Um at the end of the day Everything has its space to exist. Mm -hmm. And again, learning under the tutelage of Dre, seeing the simplicity of certain beats that were huge for him, mm -hmm. but how he made it. Dre wasn't showcasing himself as a beat maker okay. and he wasn't showcasing himself as a rapper. Mm -hmm. He was showcasing himself as an amazing producer that knew how to put together a composition. Quincy Jones yeah. does the same thing. Any Rod Temperton, you can name any producer. They don't just sit there and worry about one f uh, fraction or one element of a beat. Yep. You know, no matter what, if, it, if my father was a bassist, he didn't just sit there and worry about the bass. You know, he made sure that the composition together with his partner Niall, they made sure the composition was round. Yep. So the thing about it is every time I go into it, this is just me, mm -hmm. but when I go into any pr uh, composition, I'm not there to showcase who I am. Mm. I'm there to create a stage for the vocalist. Mm. So the first spotlight they get is in the studio. Mm. This right. is way before they even hit the stage. Yep. This is way before the record comes out. Yep. So they have to understand that you're selling mm -hmm. our record. Right. So exactly. when I do that, that means you're dead center stage. Mm -hmm. You treat your vocalist on every song, you treat your vocalist as the vocalist, as the entertainer. Mm -hmm. So you put them dead center stage. Mm -hmm. That's where I put my vocalist. When I turn around and start doing backgrounds, you have a stereo field that opens up as wide as you need it. Mm -hmm. Put vocals everywhere. 
Got it. You don't have to always go left, right with all backgrounds and then put your vocals in the middle. Okay. Because now you're you're limiting yourself. Sure. You didn't deal with a whole bunch of stereo field from zero to, <laughs> you know, whatever you widened it out to be. Yeah. So now you're negating all of this space. So you want it all to be an experience and you want somebody to find a vocal that they can engage with. Yeah. Like, I like that note. Right. But it might be over at two o'clock. Sure. Man, I like that note, but it might be over at seven o'clock. Or, right. You know, yeah. and just give them give them their own space. And music is very easy to get the vocals to sit on top of music, like the proper toppings, because you, what you want it to do is be a whole dessert. Mm -hmm. Stop worrying about what's louder or my kick has to be louder. This, no, you want to make sure the whole thing rounds out. Mm -hmm. And that's what I've always done. Every time I go in, I just... I don't want the vocal to sit ahead of the beat. Mm -hmm. I want it to recess into the track so it sounds like it's all married. So are you, knowing that you have a vocal coming eventually on a track, yeah. are you mixing and arranging knowing that's coming? No. Or do you kind of wait for the vocal and then yeah. see yeah. what happens? Okay. Yeah. okay. <clears throat> I'm, a, I'm a producer at heart first. Um, and when I say I'm a producer, I could be a vocal producer, but I'm a music producer first. So my whole thing is to get the music exactly where I want it. I want it to all be impactful. I want my drums to knock your face off. I want every frequency to melt your face. I want it to, I want it to be an experience by itself. Mm -hmm. And then when I get the, uh, the vocal, I just carve the space out. I hope that's good for <laughs> y'all. I mean, they, I'm sure he could go on and on and on, but yeah. that will be part two of this series if hey, we have it. Part two. If you want a part two, <laughs> you got to tell the waves people, give us part two, <laughs> give us part two, because Focus and I will do part two, no problem, hey, but you got to tell the waves awesome. people. Awesome. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> All right, so before I forget, we got to uh, get back to the trivia question and announce the winner because uh, we got to give this thing away, man. I mean, Focus wanted it, but I, I said I was sorry. About dude. to say, I'll take it. Yeah, I'll sorry, man. <laughs> sorry. All right. So, but before we tell the answer, I just want to read the question one more time. Okay. So the question was: Name two components you need to add to DigiGrid D in order to benefit from real-time processing and low latency monitoring with plugins. Okay. So the answer was there's actually a few components both hardware and software that you need to connect your digigrid d in order to record and monitor with plugins in real time and so here they are so you could have answered any of these four okay we only needed two so one of them is a sound grid server so number one number two a sound grid compatible network switch so you can't just take your old aol network switch that you've had since 94 that's not going to work you got to get one that is compatible all right otherwise you're going to stop the process so make sure you if you're going to do this you get a compatible one all right so that was one answer sound grid compatible network switch the next thing you need is an ethernet cable and that's how everything connects it's a really cool system so you can usb or anything else just the one ethernet so Okay, and then you also need a computer that's running the SoundGrid software, such as SoundGrid Studio, and that's a free plugin. So again, SoundGrid server, SoundGrid compatible network switch, Ethernet cables, and a computer running SoundGrid software, such as SoundGrid Studio. Okay, so let me get to the chat here and see who won. Okay, Andy Riviera, my friends, nicely done, sir. A uh, little golf clap from Focus and I, just for you, just sir. For you. You're welcome. Yeah, uh, and <laughs> his answer was the sound grid server and switch. So uh, I will expand on that switch part. Don't forget it needs to be compatible. That's the only thing I'll say there. But nicely done, Andy. Uh, we will get your information and get that out to you ASAP, okay? So I think, let's see, let me get to chance. Um, okay, so we got that. I think that's about it. So I'm going to go with the outro then. I think anything else you want to tell anybody? or? Uh, no, if, if you guys ever want to um, get in contact with me, um, I answer everything that's, that's sent to me. Uh, so um, I'm always on Instagram, uh, Brandon myself, and that's at focus, the number three D-O-T-S, and... If you ever need me, just hit me up. Um, I'm here to uh, connect with people, you know. 
very nice of you. Somebody is very busy that's really nice. So if he doesn't answer you right back, cut him some slack, would you? Yeah, I mean, yeah. come give, on now. Give me a little break. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so I, here's my little intro, I pre- or outro, rather, I prepared. Um, so I have to say in the short time that we've spent together, you definitely carry your dad's legacy. I mean, you really do. Those albums that he created were, they're still amazing, right? We still love those albums. Thank you're you. doing the same thing. I mean, you're going to... We're going to go on in in 60 years and still go like this to your beats. Wow. Because you can't not every time mm-hmm. I would put on a beat. I'd, it would, I'd just find myself doing this. And so I was like, why am I doing that? <laughs> why am I doing that? And so I thank you very much for taking the time to kind of explain to all of us mm-hmm. how you get that, that beautiful sound. Um, and so I have to say, in my opinion, you've hit the timeless zone. Like there's, there's oh, wow. records that come out and they're great for that summer, right? Mm-hmm. Ah, so awesome. Great five years. But then there's the timeless ones, mm-hmm. you know, kind of blue and so on and so forth that, mm-hmm. that will never go away. You know, mm-hmm. like, so for me, you and Dre uh, really have put a stamp on, y- you've made your mark, man. And, wow, and wow. so wow. the last thing I'll say um, for all of y'all is you've seen how kind he is, right? I hope it's shown through because talent's one thing musically, but if he's not a sweet guy and humble, Dre's not going to work with him and neither is anybody else. So I have to say you need kindness, you need understanding, you need seasoned ears with a wide musical experience. And once you have that, then you can start to fall in line with this man, all right? So start with the music, get that going, but make sure you're always good to people and always assume the person you're talking to knows something more than you, all right? So that's my little thing. Now I'll do the official Waves goodbye. So that what wraps up Waves Open Sessions. Um, this is my second one, and I can't wait to do more. And we thank you again, Focus. Thank you so much. Man. We really do. Um, if you like the event, make sure you tell us uh, in the chat on Facebook, and um, make sure you hit up Focus and tell him what you like on his Instagram so it can blow up. Um, don't forget to subscribe to the Waves YouTube channel um, uh, so you can see more events like this one. And uh, that's it. That's, uh, That's me done for Waves Open Session. Thank you very much.